Hello everyone, my name is David Scheuer with StockerFinance.com and today we're going to talk about Snapchat. Alright guys, I just want to say before this video starts that I was really like slurring my words and talking weird in this one. It was kind of late. I'm not really sure why. I was tired, so I'm sorry about that. But anyways, um, I hope this video is educational and helps you out a lot in understanding this company and uh, my point of view on it as well as some other points of views. So anyways, um, enjoy the video and have a great day. All right, so Snapchat is an app. It's really uh, in the news right now a lot. And basically, it is a messaging app that you can share and send pictures and put it on something called Stories. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But it's very controversial right now in the stock market. A lot of people have made a lot of money shorting this. It was initially released at $17 in its IPO about two months ago, three months ago, I believe. And when it came out, um, I, I knew it would do this. Lots of people knew it would do this. It just spiked right up. It shot up to about $20, and then it kind of faded off and went back down. And that was pretty easy to uh, see that coming. A lot of people saw that coming, and so a lot of people shorted it. And now it's down to about $17.54, and it actually just recently crashed down to exactly $17, or about $17.01, I think it was. So that is pretty, you know, pretty interesting. Anyways, so let's keep talking here. All right, so this is why I'm going to talk about Snapchat, though, because personally, I feel like Snapchat is actually one of the better social media, uh, you know, upcomings right now. I think it's going to keep going. I think it's going to take off eventually. I think right now it just needs a little, people are a little confused about it, and they need to understand it a little better about what it is. So let me tell you what Snapchat is. I use it all the time, not just to, you know, have spread my news and share with people, but also to message my friends. I use Snapchat more than I text now, and I don't know why, it just sort of happened. It's almost I feel like it's more personal cuz you're sharing pictures of your face or something else, and that's why I really love it. So let's go ahead and talk about why Snapchat could be great. Uh but we're also going to talk about why it could fail. So let's get into this. So first off, I'm at the Snapchat homepage here. And to further understand what Snapchat is, I just wanted to show you guys this. So it's on the phone, by the way. It's not on the computer. But this is just, they show a lot of how they make money on the computer. This is why I'm showing you it. So first off, geo filters. It's showing a good demonstration right here of what it is. Basically, as you can tell, you slide your, you know, you take a picture, you slide to the left, puts a little filter over your picture or whatever. Sort of like what these people are doing right here on the screen. So what this allows you to do though, especially for companies, is to purchase an area, and if we can actually click on uh, geo filters, oh, uh, create your own here, you can actually, as you can tell, create yours. So let's see, um, um, here we go, let's try, let's do personal maybe, let's see if this will let us do that. Um, Illustrator templates, I'm not really, okay, I guess it won't let us do that right now. Choose, oh, choose area. Here we go. All right. So what you can do, uh, we'll go, okay, yeah, we can just use Los Angeles here. So let's say you want to, um, who, where, where should we do? Okay, the international airport here. How about that? So you want to make a geo filter because you're, I don't know, maybe you're advertising something at the uh, Los Angeles National Airport. Maybe you're an airline and you're giving out some free tickets to go somewhere at this time and so you're trying to get people in the airport to know that so you can come to your gate or purchase tickets with your airline or something like that so what you can do here is um, uh, oh there we go draw fence alright so you're gonna draw a fence here alright we're just gonna draw a fence around the airport just like that and now oh must be under 15 million square feet alright so I guess it's a little big so let's reset that. Let's do, let's say it's just the center way here. How about this? Just this little thing. Okay, there you go. So now, with this, as you can tell, this cost $1,181.71 for 2.7 million, almost 2.8 million square feet. Where if someone takes a picture in there on Snapchat and slides their geo filter over and sees this, they're going to see you. They don't even have to take a picture with it. They could just be sliding through the filters and see this picture. And that's why this is so important. Now, a creator named Gary Vee is popular on YouTube. YouTube and social media 
Um, he does Vayner Media as his business. Gary V really took control of this and uses this to his, his advantage on his book tour. And he showed how this can really be a successful way to advertise what's happening, especially in a local area. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, this is one of the ways that I think is the most successful ways they're going to make money. Another way is, well, just simply ads on their site. Now, advertising on their site, it's a little bit weird. I feel like um, they definitely need to perfect it a little more. There's a lot more room for them to improve, and that's why I like them a lot. It's because Snapchat is always coming up with new, innovative ideas. And the one downside to this, though, is that Facebook steals almost all of their ideas. And this is one huge downfall that I just hate every time I see Facebook. You know, it mainly goes on Instagram, but um, Instagram's just been completely taking, and fa Facebook owns Instagram, in case you didn't know that. But anyways, it's just all Snapchat's ideas, the stories, the filters, all the stuff, stickers, most things are just completely getting copied by Facebook. And since Instagram has a larger user base, Instagram is getting most of a larger audience and people are using Instagram stories and we'll talk about stories here in a second instead of Snapchat stories. So now what are stories? Where stories are basically a thing that you can add. It's basically your personal story. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. I'll have to show a picture of it and what it is. You basically take a picture and then you post it to your uh, story. So like you take a picture like these people are doing in this little part here and then basically what you do is you post it on your story and so that'd be all the people all your friends or all the people that have you on snapchat that added you will now see that story so this allows people um, especially celebrities and stuff to advertise because they can take a picture with something and say hey look at me i'm at this place with this thing in my hand you know or hey i've got this beats headphones right i'm wearing them and they don't even have to say that they can just take a picture of them on and these companies could pay them a hundred thousand dollars to do that because they know a hundred thousand people are going to see them and be like oh my god i have to go get those purple beats headphones with sparkles on top as well since Kim Kardashian just got him since I'm watching her um, snapchat or whatever you know what I mean sorry it's a little confusing I know I'm talking fast but that's sort of the gist of snapchat at the moment now another big thing that I like about snapchat here and we're gonna talk about the stocks and the numbers and we're gonna look at some other stuff here in a second another big thing I like about snapchat though is it's a good source not well, I wouldn't say good source but it is a source of news for a lot of people and if you look at snapchat they actually have if you go swipe to the right right above your stories if you use snapchat you'll know that there's a lot of different news sources that you can choose from that you can see and you can customize your layout of which news sources that you can see so you can basically have a magazine on snapchat that when you go on snapchat you're not just looking at all your friends and stuff right above it you're going to see all these different news articles and you can subscribe to be notified and stuff when they upload a new thing or whatever and you'll see that right on your phone and so I don't know if they pay Snapchat or not for this. I haven't looked into it that much in terms of uh, the news agencies advertising. But if they are, which would be huge, Snapchat can make a lot of money from that. Because I personally, there, there's, they're very clickbaity, and so I always click on them. You know, it's always really weird, and I don't know, it's weird. You know, hip, in quotation marks. You know, news sources that post this stuff but there are things you know if, some, if a tragedy happens or something all right guys so i actually found a great video about it on Kramer, snapchat uh, first before him and else, some people talking because about I snapchat and so I that is really one good big thing that i like about snapchat, snapchat. So, is that yeah, sort of section and i think they're going to grow a lot and when they grow that's one thing that they need to work on better is a uh, more advertising and making making sure they're very profitable because as we know right now snapchat is not currently profitable and that is one downfall and that's all you get they're trying to insert video snapchat is a multi-dimensional company evan will tell you it's it's a it's a phone it's a camera company uh but it's a communications device and it's a media company it's true it's true and it's I a messenger that's, that's, and, but and if you were, they, would play the eric schmidt role it yeah. would happen well okay they, but you they, have to be eric schmidt without it i don't want to touch it they have to they have to get their narrative right they're finding their right. legs and i think imran and team did a great job getting this thing public and I think Evan. I like is, him too. And I think em, uh, uh, Evan is a great product guy. We'll give Jeff Lucas some time. To, they've announced a couple of ad things: ad manager, then let let people use credit cards to buy ads. They bought uh, Placed, which is an analytics company. They, they're getting their legs, but on the reverse side, I hear things coming out of there of a lot of executives leaving, mm. a lot of turnover. They're finding they got to find their metrics that they can operate the business. 
anyways, I thought that was very good insight into Snapchat and the good and bads, or the, you know, the pros and cons of Snapchat right now. So now let's just look at some simple numbers here. So their earnings are actually estimated to be above. They didn't make the estimated earnings. Their, act, their, their actual was, you know, minus two point minus 20 cents so just barely missed the estimated and that really hurt them quite a lot so hopefully they can get above the estimated earnings or at least right on target because their estimated earnings for quarter two of 2017 are is significantly higher than quarter one so if we look at the ratings i hate looking at the ratings by the way um i hate looking at analyst ratings and stuff i think they're really dumb but anyways, the current is 17.54, and the average is uh, uh, the average price target is 20.9. So that's good in terms of what analysts think. Um, it's a little, it's just above, almost a buy, 2.7 recommendation rating. Again, don't, well, almost a hold. Sorry. And again, don't look at this stuff and really consider Snapchat based these off these estimates and things. Never do that with any company. It's just not. This is not how you should invest. You need to do your own research and make your own educated opinion. So, anyways, they recently, as I said, touched 1703. It looks like it was 1703. Was at the bottom. 17. Exactly 17. And what happened when they touched 17 was that they bounced back. And this is something really important because this means they didn't just keep going through the roof. This showed that people did. You know, people realize this is a good time to buy and that they could perhaps keep going up. So this is a good sign that they didn't just keep going down. If they had gone below their IPO price, obviously that would have been terrible and that could possibly be the end. But because they're bounced back and they've been up 3% today, which is the two days after that crash they had or one day after the crash they had. So was it one day after? Yeah, I guess it was one day after. Sorry. So anyways, this is these are just some reasons, you know, I'm not I'm not going to get too into it of why they can do this. All right, so besides the filters and how Snapchat works and besides the numbers and looking at the graphs and stuff, this is another reason why I think Snapchat will actually keep going before it ever crashes or something bad happens to it. And this is why I think it could potentially take off in my opinion. Everyone has their own opinions. So anyways, when you look at a kid's phone, and this is the new generation, millennials, you know, whatever. When you look at their phones, all right, they generally have three things on their phone. Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, you would say, what about Facebook? Facebook is also there, but Facebook, all right, and we'll draw a little Facebook box here. I know this looks like a two-year-old drew this, but anyways, Facebook the problem with this is that it's generally older people, it's generally a generation above millennials that are using Facebook. Millennials, in my opinion, and people that are younger than them, especially uh, people that are in middle school and even you know, even grade school and stuff right now, are generally with Instagram. This is the big one. They're owned by Facebook, obviously. But what I'm saying by this is that these three are the three that they're using the most, especially these two, Snapchat and Instagram. You've got your personal profile here, kids. Will, what people will do and what these people do, and trust me, you know I'm sort of one of them, and so I kind of know. So what people do is they will have their Instagram, all right. And when they meet up with people, they say, "Hey, follow me on Instagram or whatever." But what generally happens first is people will ask instead of asking for their phone number nowadays, they're asking for their Snapchat. And one great thing about Snapchat is that you don't need to say, hey, what's your profile? And have to remember it or write it down or something like that when you get home, you know, if you meet a cute girl or something. Instead, you can literally, Snapchat has this little thing here. It looks kind of like a, a, co, a barcode. You can literally put your camera over this on Snapchat and then it adds them right away. It's almost, it's simpler and faster than adding someone on a phone, on an, adding someone's phone number to your phone. And this is one thing that's huge that they really are revolutionizing the messaging and you know connecting with other people and now a lot of people are calling them a camera company a lot of people are calling them this but in my opinion they are a messaging a social messaging app not just a social media app they're a combination of everything instagram is really just a social media profile app similar to facebook obviously and twitter in my opinion is more of just a sort of almost like a news outlet it's really not as personal in my opinion twitter is more of just Hey, it's great for the news. It's great for looking at that. Great for seeing what people are up to. But it's not necessarily as personal as Snapchat. Snapchat is more 
like a phone number in that sort of personal sense. You really have your friends added to it. You know, you talk to your friends on and people you know. You don't just have a thousand random, you know, people that you, I mean, maybe you do, I don't know. But that's why I think it's so special and one reason that it's going to stick around for a long time and not just disappear. So with that said, uh, I'm not sure if this changed your opinion on Snapchat. I wasn't trying to change your opinion on Snapchat. Personally, my view on Snapchat is that it is good. All right? It is good, in my opinion, and I think it will do great. However, I do believe it needs to get its foot in the door or out of the door, honestly. It just needs to get up, get moving, it needs to get settled in, and it needs to get built back up and get, really get its foot in the ground before doing anything else. It needs to figure out how to advertise. It needs to get all of its employees together and get everyone settled in and just really get things together because if they don't meet this quarter two earnings or something and they don't you know, exceed or meet expectations, people are going to hear the news, which generally talks about them negatively, as we can tell by looking at uh, right here. Well, it's probably going to sink if people if it does not exceed these expectations. So that's all it needs, really, in my opinion, for investors to you know think differently of it. Anyways, guys, this is just kind of an overview of Snapchat and the stock itself. I know it's been very controversial. I hope I covered sort of both sides of it. I know I was a little leaning more towards the, oh, it's going to do great side, because that's just my opinion. Anyways, so I uh, hope this was a good video. I know it was kind of a long, weird one. Uh, I'll be making more videos a lot, so make sure to subscribe. And yeah, I will see you guys later. Peace out.